Do the New York Rangers have an extremely deep defensive draft in the 2018 NHL entry draft? And was selecting Vitaly Kratsov the best decision at ninth overall? Let's talk about it next. Welcome back to Hockey Scouting Report. So glad you're here. So glad you're watching. Today we're going to look at the New York Rangers 2018 NHL Entry Draft. It starts at ninth overall with the biggest dark horse of the entire draft, Russian Vitaly Kravstov. And they also, after that, went with a lot of defenders. It's a very interesting draft for a team that is rebuilding, but more retooling. They are staying with some veteran talents, trying to build as quickly as possible to be that playoff talent team but still have all of these young talents. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to do that thumbs up. Of course, subscribe for more content. We're really close to 1,000 subscribers, just a couple away. So hopefully we can reach that. And then check out my Twitter as well. It's at Hockey Levine to check that out. So let's get right into the content. So ninth overall, Vitaly Kravstov comes off. He's a right winger, one of the best right wingers in the draft. The best being Andrei Svechnikov. And then Philip Zadina, who can play either the left or the right, primarily the left. So Kravstov really comes off as that next best forward after that group I just mentioned, as well as Brady Kachuk. A bunch of defenders go in between. We see Kravstov comes at 9. He's 18 years old, right winger, 6'4", 183, so plenty of great size there. Long term, he looks to be a sniper and a power forward. And this year, what's most interesting is he played for Tractor of the KHL. As an 18-year-old, you don't usually see 18-year-olds get a ton of minutes in the KHL. When you do see, this is something that we really want to talk about. Ely Tolvin in last year put up amazing numbers in the KHL as young as he was. Karol Kaprizov has done it for years as young as he is, putting up these great numbers. Kravstov looks to be doing a very similar thing. This year, 35 games played, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points, 6 penalty minutes, and a plus 3. In the playoffs, 16 games played, 6 goals, 5 assists, 11 points. An amazing playoffs, one of the best for Trachter. And next year, he could be putting up potentially 30 or more points. For an 18-year-old, that would be fantastic. He also played in the VHL, that second-tier league in Russia, for Shelman. Nine games played, four goals, three assists, seven points. So we see overall that Kravstov is a sniper. He can put up these greasy goals. He can get in front of the net. He has that size. He is, however, also a playmaker. We see in the playoffs of the KHL, six goals. To put up any goals at all for an 18-year-old in the playoffs in the KHL is very tough. You don't get a lot of ice time looking at fourth-line minutes usually. So to put up even just a few goals is impressive. To do six goals, five assists, we see how influential he was as largely a second-line player for Trotter. And if we look at how he compares to an NHL player, well, if we look at Evgeny uh, Kuznetsov, which is who I compare Kravtsov to in his particular scouting report video, Kuznetsov also played for Trotter in the KHL for four seasons. And if we look at uh, Kravstov's season last year, before we get back to Kuznetsov, well, Kravstov last year played in the MHL, 41 games played, 13 goals, 23 assists, 36 points. So we see he jumped from a very successful MHL season to an extremely impressive KHL season, like I said, having those four goals, seven points, and 35 games. Now, if we look at Kuznetsov, how he did in his draft year for Trotter in the KHL as an 18-year-old, 35 games played, 2 goals, 6 assists, 8 points. So almost identical, 2 less goals. In the playoffs, 4 games played, only 1 goal. So overall, Kuznetsov uh, put up worse numbers than Kravstov in that same 18-year-old draft year. So there's so much to like about Kravstov. Really projects to be the next Kuznetsov. Yes, he can play on the right wing. Kuznetsov also played on the right wing in the KHL, later shifted to the center spot, of course, now for the Washington Capitals playing in that center spot. Kravstov can do the exact same thing. And what we see with Kravstov's game is he doesn't really have a transition game, and his skating backwards isn't that great. Similar story with Kuznetsov. But what Kravstov really succeeds in is amazing skating forwards, uh, amazing acceleration. He plays at a high level of speed. He can be scoring at a high tempo. And so when we look at the Rangers lineup, down the middle, when you see Philip Hito and Leas Anderson as two very skilled players, also speedy players, long term, that skill is really going to gel nicely with Kravstov. We also see Kravstov plays a very strong one-on-one -on -one game, which Leas Anderson also does. Very shifty player, very creative player. 
So that should gel very well for the Rangers long term. Kravtsov has a very good shot, soft hands, so he can be a sniper. What's really questioned overall is his two-way game, the transition game, skating backwards, and then his decision-making at times is questionable. But as an 18-year-old playing in the second-best league in the world and doing a decent job in the regular season and then a fantastic job in the playoffs, better than a lot of veteran players in the KHL, we can see how successful Kravtsov is going to be. Very much a dark horse of this draft. Will he ever come to the NHL? That's always a factor. His contract in the KHL expires after this year. He will be going back and playing this year. So potentially after this season, he could go right to the NHL, similar to Ely Tolvanen. When the KHL season finishes, they will finish mid-February, unless they go to the playoffs. He could come right to the NHL. If not, it might be a season later. Or we might see a Carl Koppersov type issue where he once again resigns and stays many more seasons. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Kravtsov. But when he does come to the NHL, 20 goals is certainly possible. 25 goals is possible. But then also those 20 to 25 assists. So we're talking about a playmaker, but a true sniper. And when we look at the Rangers' depth chart on the right particularly, we see Matsugarello is a 2019 UFA. So potentially, if he does not get re-signed, I would assume he would. But if he doesn't, Kravtsov will really come in and fill that gap. Zuccarello is a guy that you want to re-sign. You could also move him at the deadline for trade value if the Rangers are still having a struggling season, which is possible. We see uh, Pavel Busnevich is a 2019 RFA. So to have another countryman there for Kravtsov should do very well for his development, helping him get into the culture gap over here. Philip Hietzel, we see, can play the center spot or the right wing, as can Leas Anderson and both of them being 2021 RFAs, and then yes for fast, 2020 UFA. So there is some depth on the right side, but largely it's from Zuccarello and Bushnevich. If Zuccarello does leave in a year, they really do need to get Kravstoff as soon as possible. So overall, I think it's a good selection. They went and got a lot of defenders later in the draft, which I really like, because they did pass up on, particularly at this pick, they passed up Evan Bouchard, who went one pick later, and then Noah Dobson. So really passing up on two possibly number one, number two defenders, but they do make up with it later parts of the draft. So overall, I think it's a good selection. If you're a Rangers fan, comment below your thoughts. If Kravtsov never leaves Russia, it's certainly a bad pick, but it looks like he's more open to it than a lot of other prospects have been in years past. At the 22nd overall selection, the Rangers trade up during the draft to take a player that they believed was a top 15 talent, and to get him at 22nd, the Rangers thought they had to pull that trigger. They had to select him. And then is K. Andre Miller. K. Andre Miller is a guy that in my scouting report, I said he's probably going in the later part of the first round, mid to late. But he's someone that does have first pair upside. Someone who's going to go late first round because he's a long-term project pick. But he does have that first pair upside. And the Rangers believed that. They believe that's completely true with K. Andre Miller. I do as well. 6'4", 198, brings great size for the blue line. This year for USDP, he was in this interesting tandem in the USDP for defenders, Bodie Wild being that number one guy, but then also Keandre Miller and Matias Samuelson, all very talented defenders in the USDP program. So it was tough at times for Keandre Miller to break out and be an offensive threat when Bodie Wild's doing that, or to be a hitting physical presence when Matias Samuelson does that as good as Jet Wu or anyone else in this draft. So Keandre Miller has really needed to find his own way, and he's going to do so, especially at the University of Wisconsin in the fall, should be a top-pairing defender, if not this season, the season right after. It should at least be top four this year. And we see this year's numbers, 58 games played, 9 goals, 20 assists, 29 points. The numbers aren't fantastic, but keep in mind how strong of a USDP team this is, forward-wise especially, with guys like... Uh, Jack Hughes, Oliver Wallstrom, Joe Farabee, Jake Wise, so many talented players, and then all these defenders, it's tough to score individual points. It's very much a team effort in the USDP. In the USHL, 22 games played, 4 goals, 12 assists, 16 points. And now at the World Juniors under 18, Keandre Miller really stepped up and showed that he's not just a tag-along to Bodie Wilder and Matias Samuelson. He does have talent of his own. Ends up going ahead of both of them in the draft. Seven games played, one goal, two assists, three points. Four penalty minutes and a plus four. Like I said, going to the University of Wisconsin in the fall, she had a great opportunity there for him to succeed. But if you look at what he is as a player, 
Like I said, there's plenty of untapped potential with him because largely he hasn't had enough minutes to show what he can do. When he gets those minutes, when Bodie Wild was injured, when he came to the WA, uh, the World Juniors, he really stepped up and performed at a very high level. He should do that in the NCAA. He is a very powerful hitter, so working on that with Matias Samuelson has been very strong for his game. It's somewhat made it tougher for Keontra Miller to stand out as a powerful hitting defender when Matias Samuelson builds his game on that as well. Keontra Miller is someone who's not going to play overly physical, however. He does have that size. He can lay powerful hits, but he's not someone who's going to play overly physical, and so that is a flaw of his game. Someone who is 6'4 needs to be playing more of a physical edge to his game, and I think that will come when he does have the more minutes, when he isn't with another defender who's doing the exact same role, I think he will step up more in that regard. He has strong edge work. He is someone who can drive to the net and play in front of the net, even as a defender. So there is certainly a forward-type play of his game. Overall, good skating. He, like I said, plays well in front of the net. He has a strong shot from the point, and he has strong acceleration. Overall, the comparison that I make is Jake Gardner. So he's someone who can put up 40 to 50 points at the NHL level, can be at least the top four defender, if not top two, going to be a power play presence, but not necessarily a two-way defensive force. Someone who is responsible offensively and defensively, but it's not someone that you're really going to be relying heavy minutes on defensively. Keandre Miller, with that size, could easily step up and be a penalty kill type defender, be interesting to see how he develops. He really needs to work on the physicality. That's not something that he has to his game. He is a powerful hitter. He can be a powerful hitter, but it's not something that he really likes to grasp into his game like Jet Wu and Matias Samuelson really thrive on that part of their game. If you look at the Rangers' depth chart defensively, Brady Shea, that 2018 RFA, Kevin Shagkirk, 2021 UFA, Mark Stahl, who's really been uh, declining recently, 2021 UFA. So right there, there's three guys who are probably going to be with the team for quite a few seasons. Shaq Kirk will probably start reclining, uh, but really Mark Stahl has been on that decline, and you do want to add someone in, because at the most part right now, Mark Stahl is a bottom-pairing defender. Potentially can be a number four defender, but he's more of a rear guard type stay-at-home defender. We also see Anthony D'Angelo is coming in, but he's an extremely high-risk, high-reward player, even at this time. Someone who's been passed around with numerous franchises, at most is a bottom-pairing defender. John Gilmore, and then Neil Pionk. Neil Pionk looked very nice. Someone who came in last year, played at a high level, could be a top-four defender for the Rangers. So there definitely is a lot of area for them to grow defensively after moving out McDonough, especially at last year's trade deadline. Keandre Miller is a long-term project. He's going to probably take at least three seasons in the NCAA. But when he does come out, he could easily step in as a top four defender almost instantly, have a similar projection that Neil Pionk did coming in his first year. 28th overall, the Rangers once again go defense, and it's with Niels Lundqvist. Niels Lundqvist, 17 years old, birthday July 27th, so he is fairly young, 5'11", 172, played for Luya of the Super Elite, 26 games played, 3 goals, 11 assists, 14 points, 18 penalty minutes, and a plus 2. So overall, an efficient showing, not an amazing showing offensively. We're not seeing similar numbers to Adam Boquist. Well, they aren't horrible. In the playoffs, six games played, five assists, five points. And then he also played 28 SHO games. This is really where his value comes. Two goals, three assists, five points. So as a 17-year-old to be getting SHL minutes is very impressive. We talked about it all year with Rasmus Dahlin getting SHL minutes at 17 and putting up 20 points. Now, we only see Lundqvist put up five points, but still as a 17-year-old, to get a solid SHL spot every single night for those 28 games is very impressive. At the World Juniors under 18 for Team Sweden, he had two assists in seven games, and then in all eight games he did this year internationally under 18, one goal and four points. Also eight penalty minutes. So overall, he's someone who has had given a lot of experience this year internationally, SHL Super Elite. Certainly needs more experience at that SHL level. Another player who might be more of a long-term project type player. But in two, three years, he could be a top four defender. I compare him to Jonas Brodeen. And it's someone who is a good puck-moving defender, good at puck distribution, good vision, good defensive, uh, good uh, decision-making. So overall, all the cerebral aspects of his game are very strong. And he transitions that into puck-moving and stick-handling. He also joins the rush very well. He's not a great defensive player. 
And so that is a flaw of this game. You're not drafting a shutdown player here. You're not even drafting someone who's going to be a high offensive player. You're mainly drafting someone who's a transitional defender, someone who can kind of fill in the lines as a number three, number four defender, but do a lot of great things with starting the rush, joining the rush, great at puck distribution, good as a passer, and as someone who has good speed, good acceleration, can drive to the net, good uh, skating overall. So there's a lot to like here, but like I said, bad defense, and his shot also lacks power, especially from the point. It's not a slap shot. It does lack power, and it also lacks accuracy. His backward skating is also a major issue. So there's a ton of risks with Niels Lundqvist. He's not the player I would have selected at 28th overall. I think there were better defenders on the board. I think selecting Bodie Wild would have been much better. Someone who, yes, did have a very interesting showing after the combine, following in numerous mocks, fell into the second round to the Islanders, who also picked up Noah Dobson earlier. But if they could have somehow kept the Bodie Wild, Keandre Miller chemistry together, I think that would have been a much better pick. I think Niels Lundqvist, four years from now, if he continues his develop in the Super Elite um, and then the SHL, it'll be very good for his development, needs more SHL minutes, but I think it's not the best pick they could have made at 28th. In the second round, the Rangers come up and select at 39th, they select the first goaltender of the draft, and that is Olaf Lindbaum. Lindbaum, 17 years old, July 23rd is the birthday very interesting numbers with him. Domestically, the numbers have not been strong. Internationally, you couldn't ask for better. So is he the best goaltender of the draft? It's a very tough call to make. 6'1", 172. This year for the Super Elite, 20 games played, 3.10, 0 0.897. So those numbers alone, you would not want to draft him, let alone the first goaltender in the draft. You wouldn't want to draft him as a second rounder. His playoff numbers, three games played, 5.61, 0 0.823. So that alone would put him in the fourth and later rounds in the draft. But what it really makes him one of the best goaltenders and a early second round pick is in the World Juniors, eight game, or six games played, 1.66.949. Amazing showing, completely shut down. In the Lincoln Memorial, four games played, 2.50.885. He was the best goalie of the World Juniors under 18. That's really where he thrived and made his name. If you look at his numbers last year internationally, for the World Hockey Championship under 17, six games played, 2.22.922. And so overall, the numbers have been very strong. Internationally under 17 that year, 2.62.912. So a lot of very interesting numbers offensively. We see domestically, it's a struggle. The numbers really aren't there. But internationally, they're amazing. And so when we compare him to other strong defenders this draft, Jakob Skarik, Lucas Dostal, and then mainly Olivier Rodrigue, I don't think Lindbaum is that best goaltender. When we look at what he brings stylistically, he drops down to the butterfly very quickly, which is very good at rebound control, someone who you're not going to pot really any rebounds on, but he does leave the upper corners open very quickly as a result, so he can be sniped on very easily. He also relies heavily on defenders. So a lot of his game, how good it was internationally, was largely because Sweden had a very strong defensive team internationally. And when he didn't have as strong of a team defensively at the super elite level, because defenders aren't usually as developed in that league, it was tougher for him statistically. So I think the numbers here, it's tough to look through them. There is a lot of shade being thrown at these numbers because you really have to look through the numbers and see it's not just how good he's been there's a deeper reason why and it's that defenders at that level have been better for him and if we look at the rangers depth chart in the goaltending spot we know who their starter is obviously but in terms of prospects igor shesterkin is that best prospect one of the top goaltenders in the khl will he ever come to the nhl if he does he will certainly be the successor of henrik lundquist but having Lindbaum either uh, makes a decent backup for you long term or potentially can be a starter if he builds on these numbers. But in my opinion, this was way too early to select a goaltender. 39th, there were a lot of forward prospects that were very much uh, worth getting. And if you want to look at someone who can possibly replace Shesterkin if he never comes to the, the North American side, getting Lindbaum is not that player. In my opinion, he's someone who's very much a project pick and maybe, maybe one of the biggest regrets of the entire draft. In my opinion, they should have waited much longer to select Olivier Rodrigue, who ended up going 62nd, the last pick of the second round. So I think this was a mistake of a pick. 
amazing numbers internationally. If he builds on it this year, it might look like to be a great pick. But very few scouts, if any, had Lindbaum as the best goaltender. Most of them had him as number three or number four, with usually Dostal and Rodrigue being right up there as well as Shkarek. So very tough to put Lindbaum at 39th. It was very much of a surprise pick. I don't agree with it. If we look in the third round, 70th overall is Jacob Ragnarsson, 18 years old, defender, 6 foot 176. For Alz Fitzgan, 47 games played, 4 goals, 9 assists, 13 points. So to get that level of professional hockey is very good. Minus 2, 24 penalty minutes. Internationally under 19, 3 games played, no points. Overall, he's a good skater, strong edge work, good first pass, and amazing hockey IQ. Long term, Ragnarsson is probably a top 4 defender, potentially bottom pair, but he's someone who's really going to do anything you ask. He'll play well in every single situation. There's nothing really elite about his game. There's nothing that you really want to scream about about his game, but everything is at a competent level. His father, Marcus Ragnarsson, played for the Sharks for over seven years, and then a little bit over one season with the Flyers. In the career for him, 632 games played of the NHL, 37 goals, 140 assists for 177 points. There also was a physical aspect of his game, 482 penalty minutes. And right now, Marcus is actually the coach of Jacob at the Oswaskan team. So he definitely sees his development. Jacob is learning from a very talented player in terms of playing the exact same game that Jacob Ragnarsson wants to play. Being an effective player in the skating sense, but really being a player who can open up the rush, start the pass from the back end, be a creator of plays. Not necessarily someone who will finish plays or have a good shot, but someone who can work the game transitionally. Ragnarsson is that. 88th overall is Joey Keane. Very interesting pick. Once again, a defender. So like I said, the Rangers are really stocking up the defensive depth. 19 years old, 6'185", for the OHL Barry Colts, assistant captain. He had a decent showing as an overager. An amazing growth year, statistically. 62 games played, 12 goals, 32 assists, 44 points. He was the top-scoring defender for Barry this year. In the playoffs, 12 games played, 7 assists. Now, if you look at his numbers last year, 67 games played, 1 goal, 18 assists. So he went from 1 goal to 12 18 assists to 32, making it 19 points to 44. So you could think that's amazing growth, but once again, he is an overager, so potentially that has a factor to it. But also, this is the same team that has Dmitry Sokolov, who is a 30-goal scorer, Ryan Suzuki, who will be a possible top early first-round pick next year's draft, and then Andrei Svechnikov, who was his first year in juniors playing for Barry. So this team has three very talented players offensively, really helped Keane's numbers, and even if we talk about Sokolov and Suzuki who've been there, Svechnikov comes in, could have really been that difference maker as well as Sokolov, that really could have done it for Keane, made his game grow as much as it did. So the numbers are very enticing, but I think there's a deeper story behind the numbers, and that's because who he's playing with and just who's on the ice. Overall, he was their best defender, so we did get a lot of minutes with these guys, certainly had an impact with him, especially on the power play. Overall, Keane is a good skater, plays a clean game. He can elevate his game offensively on the power play. We see that this year. Has a decent two-way game, and he's a patient player with good mobility. So there's a lot of interesting factors of his game, but he's someone that I think is going to be a long-term pick. Once again, a lot of long-term picks here. He's someone who's going to be doing another OHL season, and then probably an AHL season or two, because if he is being elevated by these other players, then he needs to work more on the fundamentals of his game. And if he's not, it's going to take him time still to make sure that he alone can be this talented player. In the fourth round, 101st overall, once again, another defender. But it's one of the defenders I've been most excited about this entire draft. I think he's a major steal. And that's Nico Gross, 101st overall, 18 years old, 6'1", 185. Same team as Saren Noel. Uh, OHL Oshawa Generals, 58 games played, 4 goals, 10 assists, 14 points. His game isn't built offensively, it's built defensively, 46 penalty minutes minus 9. But we see amazing leadership really oozing out of gross. In the World Juniors under 18 for Team Switzerland, he was the captain. 6 games played, 1 goal, 3 assists, 4 points. For all 15 games he did under 18, uh, the captain once again, 15 games played, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points. Also 22 penalty minutes, so there is some offensive game that he can build into his game. But like I said, he's a very strong two-way defender, very good defensive defender. Last year, 
He played at the World Juniors under 20, put up one assist. So he's had these experiences to play at high levels for quite a few seasons internationally. And we see he really oozes leadership qualities. He was the 40th overall selection in the 2017 CHL entry draft. So he's someone who has been talked about for quite a few seasons and really got on the board at last year's CHL draft to get on the board as a possible top 90 pick of this year's draft going at 101st. He plays a physical game. He's an amazing skater, has very good lateral movement. We've talked about that with Rasmus Dahlin as having good lateral movement. Gross skates backwards amazingly. So while Niels Lundqvist struggles with it, Gross really makes up for it. Gross overall, very good skater, very strong vision, good defensively. And he looks to be a top four power play quarterback, probably a second power play unit type power play quarterback. Really does a great job being the trigger play of that power play. I think Gross is a great pick. I think long-term will be a top four defender for the Rangers. And I think this is actually the best pick they made after Keandre Miller. I think Gross long-term will be that best pick after Keandre Miller. In the fifth round, 132nd overall, a interesting pick. It is a Finn, and that is Lori Pajanemi. Pajanemi, right winger, 6'183". The birthday is September 12th, 1999, which means he is only 18, but he was already passed over in one draft because he was one of the youngest players eligible in the 2017 draft, didn't go then, but this year has a lot of reasons to show why he's a decent pick. 14 games played in the Junior A SM Liga, 3 goals, 7 assists, 10 points, 18 penalty minutes, but then he also played for the TPS in uh, Liga, 32 games played, 2 goals, 5 assists, 7 points. Very few teenagers play in Liga. At most, each team has one or two players. It's very tough to get into that as a teenager. Pajanemi did a great job doing that. We see that someone like uh, Kokanemi also did a great job in Liga as a 17-year-old. As an 18-year-old, Pajanemi plays very decently as a right winger. Last year in the Super Elite, uh, he played, or excuse me, in the uh, SM Liga, 37 games played, 8 goals, 7, 17 assists, 25 points. So overall, his numbers are offensive. He's more of a playmaker than a shooter, but can be a shooter. We see internationally under 18 for Finland, 11 games played, 4 goals, 3 assists. So he can be a playmaker, can be a shooter. He has good uh, puck skills overall, good stick handling, strong edge work, good speed and acceleration. So this is someone that can make the cuts to the net very well, get in front of the net, play some greasy parts of the game. Only being 6 foot still adds a physical presence to his game, being 183. And his defensive game, however, is a work in progress. So he's mainly a threat from the point, threat from the uh, offensive zone. He's a very crafty goal scorer, but this is someone who really needs to work on his goal scoring in terms of diversity of where he's scoring at. We look at someone like Andrei Svechnikov, he can score from really any part of the ice offensively. Brady Kachuk mainly in front of the net, Zadina mainly sniping from the points. And so we look at someone like Andrei Svechnikov who has more diversity in his shooting, you want to see that from Pajanemi. That's what he has to build on to get to that next step. I think it's a good pick, but I do think he has a lot of work to do. So once again, a long-term pick. 163rd overall, Simon Yelberg comes up, defender 6'3", 190, for the Super Elite, 43 games played, 4 goals, 5 assists, 9 points. So the Rangers are really focusing internationally on the majority of their talent in this draft. And if we look last year's numbers for Yelberg, 21 games played, 1 goal, 6 assists, 7 points. So growing that this year to 4 goals, 5 assists, 9 points, there's some slight growth there, growing a bit more uh, defensively, but also growing a bit more with his shot from the point. He was selected 24th overall in the 2018 USHL entry draft by the Fighting Saints. So it's possible he comes to the USHL. Most likely he doesn't. But to still be drafted that high shows that there is some quality to Yelberg's game. He's a defensive defender with good positioning, which is a very effective part of a defensive game. It's what you need to build on. Overall, he's a strong passer, but he doesn't do much well. There's nothing that he does bad but there's really nothing that he does well. So this is not someone who's going to be an exciting pick. At 163, there aren't many exciting picks left. Liam Kirk was one of them. But overall, this is someone who does really everything at a competent level, nothing bad. And being a defensive defender, that's what you want to ask from him. 6'3", having that size, I think it's a good bargain pick at 163rd. I think long-term, bottom-pairing defender, but really bolstering the defense 
is what the Rangers have done this draft, and I think long-term they'll have done a very good job doing so. The last pick the Rangers make is at 216. It's the second last pick of the entire draft. They didn't have any other picks, and yet the Rangers traded uh, into the seventh round once again to select at 216. So they obviously saw something in a guy who's available at the second to last pick in the draft. So did the Rangers see something that 215 other picks didn't see? Riley Hughes, right winger, 6'1", 174. 18 years old, July 27th is the birthday, so fairly young. He played in the USHS Prep School League this year. 30 games played, 21 goals, 15 assists, 36 points. Prep school leagues are really hard to translate to N uh, N NHL long term because you don't know what you're seeing. It's not the same level of hockey as USHL. It's not the same as BCHL or AJHL or NCAA. So really, it's very tough to translate these numbers. He played two games in the USHL, no points for the uh, Sioux Falls. So just to get that experience is good, but it's really tough to see what he brings. Next year, he's going to play for the Victoria Grizzlies of the BCHL. So potentially, we'll see more there. And the year after that, he'll go to the North uh, Eastern University. Last year, 29 games played in the USHS prep, 11 goals, 9 assists, 20 points. So he did grow from 11 goals to 21, took on much more of a shooting role this year. He's a character guy. He's someone that fits in really nicely with the lineup. The teammates like him. The coaches like him. So that alone, at 216, you want to get someone that can gel with any kind of lineup that uh, coaches and scouts can work with. But he's also a good skater, good vision, good shot. So there is uh, a lot of parts of his game that being that pick as late as he was, there's a lot that you can like about his game that you can work with. Someone that will take criticism and work on his game. He also snipes the corners very well. So if you're drafting anything at 216, you want to draft someone that has a quality that's decent in one category. You can work with the rest, but find something. You don't want to just get another player that's decent at everything but good at nothing. You want to get someone that brings something really decent in one category. Riley Hughes brings not an elite level, but a very strong level in sniping. Someone who really snipes the corners very well. He's going to be a, a long-term project pick. We'll have to go one year in the BCHL, probably two years in the NCAA, if not all four. But long-term, he might be a nice pick. At 216, he does have a decent shot. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this, con uh, this content, comment below your thoughts. Of course, hit that thumbs up as well as the subscribe button. And what are your thoughts? Do you think the Rangers made the best pick at ninth, selecting Kravstov over Bouchard and Dobson? Which defender in the first round do you think will be better for the Rangers, Niels Lundqvist or Keandre Miller? Do you think they should have went Bodie Wild instead of Niels Lundqvist? Comment below your thoughts, and I'll see you guys in the comment section and in the next video.